in our previous video on line length, we had ended here. Um, and recall that this is the volume, I'm sorry, not volume, this is the length element. Okay, so it gives you one piece of the length and it's based upon the Pythagorean theorem. So let's work with this in order to figure out how we would calculate the length in calculus. Um, if for a function where we're given uh, y equals f of x, right? So um, let's actually go back to the green step here and bring this down. And let's divide everything by delta x squared, right? So we will divide each term by delta x squared. Right, so if we do that to the first term, we can see that um, that gives us delta L over delta X squared. Uh, then we can look at the second term, delta X squared divided by, well, sorry about that, delta X squared divided by delta X squared will just be one. The second term on the right, um, delta Y squared, when you divide that by delta X squared, we can rewrite that, whoops, not as delta X, pardon me. The delta y over delta x, the quantity squared, and combine those together. So it's pretty easy to see how we would do that. Okay, so we lose the beautiful symmetry that we had in the green box, um, but this is going to lead us to a formula uh, for producing the length of the curve. All right, so let's continue on. Um, so if I wanted to solve for uh, delta L, uh, I could first of all, um, do a couple of things. Let's solve for delta L squared first. So delta L squared would equal the quantity 1 plus delta Y over delta X squared times delta X squared. Now to get to delta L, we just need to take the square root of everything. So delta L, a piece of length, could be rewritten as the square root of one plus delta y over delta x squared delta x. Now this is very similar to what we did with volume elements um, when we were doing volumes of rotation um, or volumes uh, of known cross sections. Uh, the key is under figuring out what this term right here means, the delta y over delta x squared, all right? Um, as x approaches zero, and so, I'm sorry, as delta x gets infinitely small, then the ratio delta y over delta x is simply the derivative relationship, dy dx, all right? Uh, the change in y over the change in x is a rise over a run, um, and that's exactly what a derivative gives us. So it's, it's a slope, um, which is becoming, uh, is getting closer and closer to the value of the derivative. All right, so if we bear that in mind, um, okay, also if y is equal to f of x, then we can say that dy dx is f prime of x, All right? So we could then put these pieces together and we could write the formula for the length of a curve um, one of two ways. So Based on this, I kind of like talking about dy dx. Um, the book uses f prime of x, though. So keeping the symmetry of what I have above, if I wanted to find the length, I would take the length element and integrate it. All right, I would integrate it from x equals some lower limit a up to some upper limit b. I would have to square uh, integrate 1 plus the derivative of y with respect to x squared with respect to x. So we can see how that matches up nicely with the length element. Um, I just have to uh, rewrite it in an integral form to sum that up. Um, if you want to write it the way that the book has it, um, they have it in the form L is equal to the integral from x equals a to b of the square root of one plus f prime of x quantity squared um, integrated with respect to x, 
All right. So you can write it either way. I like to think about it this way because it's sort of in the same form as having the deltas in there. Um, just the deltas become infinitesimals um, and we have the derivative showing up in there. Um, so that will give us the length of the line. So I'll work with that form, um, but you'll notice that the book um, uses the form to the right.